Hi there, I'm playing with Chunk, or better, this time I'm playing with servers. And as you know, computers have memory, for example, 4 gigabytes, or maybe 8, or 12, maybe 16, or 20, or a couple more. But the server I will show you today has one terabyte that's this one here IBM X3850 X5 this server was manufactured from 2000 Nine, I think. Let me see on my... Yes, from 2009 to 2015. And this model here has almost the maximum. I, I'm not sure if one or two terabyte of RAM is the maximum. So this is fully equipped with one terabyte of RAM. And that's an amount where many PC users still have smaller hard drives. So let's have a look inside. That's not possible with one hand. And here it is. What you see here in the front are the memory modules. Each of those modules has eight memories installed. We have eight modules. That makes a total of 64 memory modules. And each one is 16 gigabyte that's a total of one terabyte of ram And just in case you're wondering where the CPUs are, they are under this cover here. We have four CPUs. The processors here are Intel Xeon E7. Um, 4870. Each one has 10 cores. That's the mechanism to remove the, the heatsink. Very complicated mechanism. A little bit tricky, needs a little bit of oil from time to time. The springs are down here. That's the CPU. Original price in 2009 was $4,300 per chip. Today you get it for $200 a piece. And we have four of them, makes 40 cores or 80 threads if you use multi threading. Then here is a RAID controller, it's missing its bracket here, it's a, a little bit uh, a tinkering here. Uh, SAS cable goes to the front. We have four drives, maximum is eight drives, but these uh, servers like this are made for external uh, storage, so they only need a boot drive or some customers even boot from a 
flash card or something that can be installed inside. Then we have two power supplies with an interesting mechanism. You have to lift this lever here, then you slide it out. And this lifting mechanism oops, is in fact moving the connector here out of the way. And then you slide it out of the box. Interesting mechanism, a little bit more expensive than necessary, but well, why not? I like it. Cooling. We have two big fans here. We have two small fans here for the disc cage. We have another two big fans here inside the power supplies so the air rushes in goes through the memories to the cpus through the power supply and out on the back side okay let's put it let's put it together and see how it's working I have already connected screen and keyboard and mouse, VGA, USB, and now two power plugs. And it will be noisy right now. When the fans turn down, this means the BMC, the baseboard management controller, has started. And the system can be turned on. You see the power button is blinking slowly. That means standby. Power on. And we get a lot more of noise. Or in this case, it's called the IMM, the Integrated Management Module. IBM likes to change the names from model to model.
5 minutes 30 until Windows boots. That's only the hardware self-test. And now we get Windows 2012 booting. And 30 seconds later, it's running. Now let's see if we really have one terabyte of RAM. Uh, properties. Here it is. One terabyte of installed memory. Isn't that nice? Here you see the resource monitor. I have to make that window a bit bigger. There you can see the 80 CPU cores. They are all idle at the moment. I'm trying to run a uh, boink. I have a couple of projects but uh, I first have to uh, load new new tasks so at the moment the machine is not doing a lot yeah I think the performance tab in the task manager is a little bit clear we are somewhere between zero and zero there was a little spike here there's 43 processes that's only the windows that is idling in the background. 40 cores, 80 logical processors, as I said before. A little bit of cache. CPU speed. Well, that's it. Any transfers? No. Any tasks? No. So I let that run overnight let's see if we have some more credits from boeing tomorrow and the room here will certainly be a little bit warmer then but well it's a test why not <laughs>